Have you ever wondered why no one had attacked America, despite their interventions all across the world? Well, there are at least six very persuasive arguments why no one dares mess with the US. Huge Army They say that size doesn't matter. But when it comes to the US Army, size is everything. With a staggering 487,000 active duty soldiers and nearly 1.3 million total personnel, it's like an entire metropolitan mobilized for duty. Actually, most capitals in the world would have a smaller population than the US Army. This vast network of dedicated men and women forms the backbone of the Army's strength and capability. The US Army is the land-based unit tasked with defending the nation, safeguarding its interests, and promoting global security. Their responsibility extends beyond territorial borders, often involving humanitarian missions, peacekeeping efforts, and disaster relief operations. Their commitment to preserving peace and stability, both domestically and internationally, highlights the noble purpose behind their actions. In short, the US Army is like the world's toughest bouncer, keeping troublemakers at bay. Of course, there are far bigger armies in the world. The Chinese and Indian have superiority in numbers, but the efficient weaponry and professionalism give the US Army an edge over them. While both China and India predominantly rely on a conscript army, the US force is entirely professional. This means they are rigorously trained and involve soul-crushing exercises and an in-depth understanding of military tactics. Moreover, each soldier has to take an annual United States Army combat fitness test designed to check the readiness of all available personnel. The ACFT is intended to represent movements on an active battlefield closely. It includes basic exercises like squats, deadlifts, power throws, push-ups, pull-ups, and a two-mile run. Soldiers that fail the test are put under observation to meet the standards for the next test. That's why most US soldiers actually look like they can bench press an Abrams tank. Thankfully, thankfully the US Army has enough Abrams to go around. That's the main battle tank of the United States. About 5,000 M1 Abram tanks are used, while another 3,000 lay in storage, with some being dismantled for spare parts. Along with the tanks, the Army has 6,724 Bradley fighting vehicles, 4,466 Striker armored personnel carriers, 600 armored combat support vehicles, and around 25,000 mine-protected vehicles. And if that's not enough, the US Army has about 2,200 self-propelled artillery units, among which are 500 HIMARS systems. These bad boys were the game-changer in the Russo-Ukraine war that's still raging on. As you can imagine, this doesn't come cheap. So if you're wondering why America has no universal healthcare, well, you needn't look any further than their military spending. The United States allocates around 15% of its entire spending on its military force. This accounts for $877 billion. Four Elon Musks combined couldn't upkeep such a massive force. The US defense budget accounts for around 38% of the entire global military spending, and it's bigger than the next 10 countries combined. The second in this regard is China, with a $292 billion budget, while Russia is third with $86 billion. The US Army gets about $177 billion of the total budget, which would be the world's third best financed army right after China. Of course, the huge and well-funded army is just the tip of the iceberg. After all, in a war, whoever controls the sky controls the battlefield. Of course, the US military doctrine knows this very well. Air Force Few can rival the United States Air Force when it comes to military might. If you remember the Dumb Ways to Die song, so 
this one would probably be right up there after poke a stick at a grizzly bear, though admittedly you have a chance against a grizzly. That's more than could be said when you mess up with the US Air Force. With over 330,000 active duty personnel and a vast number in reserves, this military branch is a formidable powerhouse on its own. They have a level of organization and discipline that allows them to execute complex operations with precision and efficiency. The numbers, as always, are meaningless without the equipment, and the US Air Force equipment is the best in the world. With over 5,200 military aircraft, the US has the largest aerial armada in history. The bulk comprises the F-Series fighter jets, 1,511 units, or 29% of all Air Force. The most common fighter jet in the US Army is the F-16C. Still, the rock star of the show is the F-22A Raptor. This fearsome machinery could make even the bravest soldier cry like a little girl. Its technology is so advanced that some experts with tinfoil head attire will suggest that the aliens are behind this design. Or why not the five-dimensional lizards who control the world? Still, looking at the raptor's capabilities, they might be onto something. After all, the F-22A has the ability to supercruise, meaning it can sustain supersonic speeds without the need for afterburners. This capability allows the aircraft to cover long distances quickly while conserving fuel. Moreover, the jet is equipped with state-of-the-art avionics systems, including advanced radar, sensors, and electronic warfare systems. These technologies provide the pilot with comprehensive situational awareness and enable effective engagement of multiple targets simultaneously. And since that's not enough of an advantage, the F-22A Raptor is practically invisible. Its design incorporates stealth technology, making it difficult to detect by enemy radar systems. Its shape, materials, and coatings help reduce its radar signature, allowing it to operate deep within hostile airspace with reduced risk of detection. Detecting one of these bad boys is like detecting a bee from a hundred miles. Easy peasy. The F-22A Raptor is like a flying army on its own. It has an impressive arsenal of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons. The jet carries internally stored missiles, such as the AIM-9X Sidewinder and A-1 120 AMRAAM, as well as precision-guided bombs and air-to-surface missiles. Its weapon systems are integrated with its advanced sensor suite, enabling precise targeting and engagement. As if that's not terrifying enough, the US Air Force also has a fleet of 152 bombers. 19 of them are the strategic B-2 Spirit bombers, each one costing about $2 billion. These expensive beauties have low observable characteristics that extend beyond their radar signature. It also minimizes its infrared, acoustic, electromagnetic, and visual signatures, further enhancing its survivability and reducing the enemy's ability to detect and target it. In simple terms, the B-2 is practically invisible, and you thought the spirit nickname was just for show. The B-2 is designed with advanced stealth features that significantly reduce its radar signature. Its sleek shape, composite materials, and special coatings enable it to penetrate deep into enemy territory undetected, making it extremely difficult to track and engage with air defense systems. To add insult to injury, the B-2 has an exceptional range of over 6,000 nautical miles, 11,000 kilometers without refueling, allowing it to strike targets located deep within enemy territory. This long-range capability enables the bomber to conduct missions globally without needing forward basing or extensive aerial refueling support. To top it all off, the B-2 is equipped with advanced defense systems, including radar warning receivers, infrared countermeasures, and a defensive management system. These capabilities help protect the bomber against enemy threats, enhancing
enhancing its survivability in hostile environments. As you can imagine, these gadgets cost money, and the Air Force is handsomely compensated. For 2023, the budget of this branch of the military is approximately $194 billion. Well, to be honest, this includes the Space Force, and they do work on some seriously top-secret stuff. So, who knows? Death lasers from space next year, perhaps? Are you scared yet? Don't be silly. We still haven't told you about the most terrifying aspects of the US military. Now go change your pants, and let's get right back to it. Navy there have been some terrifying naval superiorities over the centuries. The Spanish Armada, the British Navy, and the Sea Turtles from Finding Nemo. None of them, however, can come even close to the behemoth that is the US Navy. The naval superiority of the United States Armed Forces is simply overwhelming. Not only can no other country compare, the entire world combined can't even come close to the sheer force and numbers of this colossal power. With 350,000 personnel and 485 vessels under their command, the US ensures nothing happens on the high seas without their knowledge. Moreover, as they are determined to retain their superiority, the US Navy has ordered another 90 ships that are either in construction or being planned. When it comes to equipment, the US Navy doesn't rely on old dragon-headed Viking ships. No, they opt for a space-age technology infused into their massive force. With 11 aircraft carriers, the US Navy guarantees that its fleet will not only be dominant in the seas, but also in the sky. Just so you can imagine how overwhelming the US naval power is, you can check how long it took five aircraft carriers to take down the entire Iraqi air defense systems in 2003. It took them under a week. After that, the war continued for merely six weeks before all major hostilities ended. Along with the carriers, the US Navy also boasts a massive fleet of 22 cruisers, 62 destroyers, 12 dock landing ships, 17 frigates, 4 guided missile submarines, 53 attack submarines, 9 amphibious assault ships, 2 amphibious command ships, 9 amphibious transport docks, 3 littoral combat ships, 13 mine countermeasure ships, and hundreds of other support ships. As you can imagine, this doesn't come cheap. And naturally, the US Navy gets the lion's share of the defense budget. For 2023, the US Navy has $230 billion, which is almost as high as the entire Chinese military budget. Still, these ships are not the most terrifying thing about the Navy. This honor goes to one of the deadliest special forces in the world, Navy SEAL Team 6. To become part of this team, you have to literally go through torture, as the recruiting process consists of sleep deprivation, hypothermia resistance, electric shocks, waterboarding, mental torture, and of course, rigorous physical exercises. Unsurprisingly, there are more deaths during the recruitment process than during missions in this team. As you can see, the Navy is not just a bunch of sailors armed with rubber ducks and water pistols. These highly trained professionals eat, sleep, and breathe the sea. So naturally, they are experts at hosting elaborate sink-your-own-battleship parties. Furthermore, the Navy's primary goal is to protect the interests of the United States and ensure the free flow of goods and services across the world's oceans. They are the guardians of the seas, the maritime superheroes who keep pirates, smugglers, and giant sea monsters at bay. No wonder you haven't heard Liam Neeson shouting to release the Kraken. The Kraken is scared. And how can it be otherwise when one-third of the US nuclear triad is cruising the seas and another is flying menacingly over its head? As for the third one, well, let's find out. ICBMs 
The third part of the nuclear triad is the land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles. Those are positioned all across the United States and can reach every city in the world. So don't worry, you are just one red button push away from being obliterated. Well, not exactly. The entire launch process is much more complicated and secretive. Still, there is certainly not one giant red button in the Oval Office that sends all the nukes to wherever Joe Biden said in a dementia episode. Episode. The U.S. land-based nuclear warheads are currently mounted on a $7 million LGM-30 Minuteman III. The U.S. has 400 of these bad boys spread all across America. Another 14 nuclear warheads are deep under the sea, carried by nuclear-capable Ohio-class Trident submarines. Five are in the Atlantic, and nine are in the Pacific. So there's no safe place on Earth if you think you've been left behind. The rest of the 1,360 five operational warheads are placed on B-2 strategic bombers, ready to rain hell from the skies. The ICBMs, however, are rarely used. Those are for extreme cases. And thankfully, we haven't crossed this bridge yet. So, for now, the US forces predominantly use UGM-109 Tomahawk and UGM-84 Harpoon submarine-launched missiles when it comes to submarine warfare. Otherwise, the US armed forces have a range of deadly spears, such as the AIM-7 Sparrow air-to-air -air missile, AGM-114 Hellfire air-to-surface missile, MIM-104 Patriot surface-to-air missile, Missile and the FGM-148 Javelin surface-to-surface -surface missile, to name a few. And while each one of these deadly beauties costs a small fortune, they are highly effective due to one simple fact. They are part of the U.S. Precision Guided Munition Policy. Precision Guided Munitions if, despite all the firepower, nukes, and missiles, you're still deranged enough to think you can come on top in a war against the US, you're in for a treat. Not only do the US armed forces have a stockpile of munitions that can probably topple Everest, but most of their heavy weaponry uses precision-guided munitions, or PGMs. The smart bombs, as these ultra-modern death toys are called, are used in all US military branches and have one task and one task alone. To be precise. This means that they can hit a specific target based on one of a few options. For example, they can be GPS, infrared, or laser-guided. These weapons are so effective that despite their high manufacturing price, they are worth every cent. For example, in the first Gulf War, PGMs comprised only 9% of the used weapons, yet accounted for about 75% of all successful hits. So naturally, after 1991, the US military invested heavily in developing and enhancing these weapons capabilities. And if you think Skynet is behind this entire endeavor, waiting to destroy the world, the sixth reason why you shouldn't mess with the US will definitely not give you any peace of mind. Drones If the Russo-Ukrainian war taught us something, it's that whoever has the most drones has the advantage. It's quite astounding seeing a $2 million rocket downing a $20,000 drone. It's quite cost-effective. Thus, the force that has the most drones has the biggest advantage. Guess who has the most drones? Come on, I'll wait. Yes, the US has at least 11,000 unmanned aircraft systems, better known as drones. Those are the mosquitoes of the battlefield, pesky, deadly, and tough to get rid of. While just several years back, the UASs were used entirely for surveillance, after the start of the War on Terror, the US has invested heavily in transforming them from a support tool to a prime weapon against the enemy. Obviously, messing with the United States Armed Forces is not a good idea. But, on the other hand, maybe a quick presidential assassination will do the trick. After all, the NSA doesn't have the best record at keeping presidents alive. Still, you may find they upped their game quite a lot in the past few years. Just check out how the US president travels.